Yo, bartender. Bar is closed. Hey, yo, bartender, what's good, man? Let me, let me, let me, let me get a drink, man. Let me get a shot. Hey, man, I know you just pulled up to the bar, but we closed. Come on, come, come on, man. I, I, I you, you, you gotta be able to give me a shot, man. Come on. You look like you need a drink, man. But I hate to tell you this, man. We about to close. So, so you mean to tell me all these people out here they got sh they got drinks and they got shots, but I can't get nothing the bar closed that soon? Okay, man. I don't know what else to say. I got this show to have my age at the crib, and I'm trying to get to it. But last call was ten minutes ago. You know what? It's alright. Don't you know? Don't even don't even worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Tell you what. I'm gonna get you one drink. Does it look like you need one drink? One. I right, I can I can do one drink. I can do one drink. Cause I I really yeah yeah. Hey man, anything man, anything man. Look like you got a lot on your mind and you need a friend right now. Pour it on me. Ain't no last calls here. Bar Talk with Jay. So again, if you small, residential, with a little roof job you need done, or okay. you big, with big construction and you need that construction can, definitely go to my website and that way you can get the little discount I'm going to give you right. for going to R&B, a person that want to give you the service that big companies sometimes don't give like they used to. Here, give it to you. That's my man Floyd, R&B, roll off. Yeah, yeah, you ain't told the whole story on that one. Well, though. you know, I'm gonna give him more. See, but see, can I, can I see, give him a little bit at he, the time? He, he, he pumping up Floyd, but y'all don't know the other half of the story is Brother Jay. You know well, what I mean? I Brother love Jay, ownership, right? Brother Jay is partnered up with That's my right. man Floyd. That's right. And that way, y'all right. get 27 years of the industry with a small company that only been around for like two and a half years. Uh, we're gonna give it 27 years of experience, and that's why the customer service is gonna be great. One of the reasons, that's what I believe in. Yeah. Uh, taking care of the clients is the number one thing. That's who pays the bill. There we go. So go to r and again, go to my website. That's why I, again, endorse them. Okay. It's because I'm gonna be a part of a situation that's gonna change the game. This is how go. the little people can become big. It has a vision. And you already doing it, bro. Well, you I got already you. Doing it. I can look what I'm next to. I'm next to, again, my man, Craftmatic, back with Bar Talk with Jay, remember? That's our advertisement, but we're back with Bar Talk with my man in the building, Crabmatic in the building. How's you doing, big baby? Man, I'm good, bruh. Uh, you know, I'm always good, but I'm especially good right now. Uh, mm -hmm. As you know, for you folks who have been following the show, uh, life has just turned a direction for me that's uh, giving me horsepower and allowing me to really uh, focus on, you know, my passions and... Uh, and really get the next level of life done, you know? Um, sure. you know. By the time you reach your 40s, you should really be focused in on the things that are most important for your life, and uh, so I am. And uh, most importantly, I'm glad to be here with you folks tonight. Uh, again, I'm Craftmatic, this is my boy Smooth Jay, hey. and this is Bar Talk with Jay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we do is inspire through dialogue. And uh, tonight, we have a very interesting dialogue. Um, they're, very all, interesting. This, they're always interesting, but tonight is just going to be very laser focused on the things that really touch us all, right? We're talking about love and the loss of love, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, before we go any further, uh, we're glad you folks here with us tonight. Let's go ahead and start it off with a prayer. Would you like to pray for us tonight? Yeah, you know, somebody, I, I got to go in. I got to here real quick. Lord, bless. Bless everybody around us. Can you grab them and hold them tight? Yes. I always want to say I never want to come just when I need things. I need to always praise you. Yes. There's a lot of things that happen in life, and we always want to look for the good and bad, but we understand you have a bigger vision. Yes. Please allow me to have a better understanding of what I go through, for I can see my way in a way I've never seen before, mm -hmm. but I can finish the mission that you have for me, yes. not of one that I just desire. My fleshly desires is not of what you want. Please take some of these things away and give me the guidance that I need. Yes. And if anybody is just walking with me, please hold tight, because it's a rough road, but we will make it. Amen. 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 And again, that was personalized because the brother going through things, okay? Yeah. Uh, not, not, not just business, but personal. We, we always feel like we, we know where we're going, and a lot of times, we're not for sure. And I don't want to doubt. I just want him to guide me. Yeah. And I like his hand instead of my own because I really feel like sometimes I grab onto the wrong thing. Yeah, we all grab onto the wrong thing. Yeah, but we don't admit and, though. And you know, I'm gonna talk a little bit later mm -hmm. on here in the first segment about uh, loyalty and faithfulness. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbara set up a segment for me and I think that ties right into there. You, you, you can't run around trusting what hasn't proven itself to you, you see? And your way is, hey, I give it all to him. I, 
you know, I share it with him and I ask and supplicate unto the Lord and he receives uh, the impress of my, my desires and uh, helps me in my life and guides me and structures me and, and, uh, and that is a proven process for you. That's a proven process for those of us, especially those of us uh, who live in Christ, but uh, even for most people, that's still a proven process that I pray to, uh, to my Lord and, uh, and he answers my prayers, but I know to go there. That's the most important part of the equation. You know where to go. Like yeah, it. I know where to go. Like so it. let's uh, quickly recap last week's show. Um, very interesting show. Very interesting topic. You and your partner of three years are looking up your ancestry and realize that you are second cousin. Now nobody else, not even the family, knows what do you do? Well, you've been going in hard. Three years. <laughs> you days. Three years. That's a long time to be with somebody and find out you have to just break up with them. You have to just put them to the side. Yeah. You can no longer follow your hopes and dreams and your passions because you are blood already. Yeah, you, you, and, you're uh, uniting the family with the family already. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's embarrassing with a family reunion. Yeah. And you can't do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, it gets to a point where we won't say other people have done it and this, that, the other. Yeah, they have. But one of the things I would like to say is how we broke out, um, if you go back and listen to our show, that there's a lot of secrets that's been here. A lot that, of secrets. That right there puts you in a bad situation because you just didn't know. Yes. So by not going to family reunions, but also people that have secret kids on the side, and that, that, that halves that most of us don't even want to look at halves, they just your brother and your sister put you in that situation where you can be running across your own kind yeah. um, because of the secrets. Yeah. So Especially again, in small there. town USA. Woo, I don't even think about small town anymore because uh, even Atlanta's big, yeah. but it's really small. Yeah. I, I ran it into is. people in Atlanta and I was originally born in Akron, Ohio. Yeah. Now, this, that's something crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. It's just the makeup. I mean, the, the reality is that if you have sex with a family member, it's called incest. And uh, it is um, outlawed by the law, by, by the Lord. So, um, you know, that's the bottom line of that subject. Even though there are a lot of people who um, said that they would not quit them. They wouldn't stop. They would, you know, after three years, I mean, you know, it was harder than the pain. It right. would be hard, especially if you really love and really appreciate this person. And, you know, that is possible. I hope we all haven't lost the, uh, the idea that uh, love is really possible. Uh, if you have, then you probably need to listen to this show a little more because it is possible. Oh, it's, it's very possible. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But love don't come easy. No, <laughs> it doesn't. You know, I got You know, I shake uh, yeah, it. Yeah, but it shouldn't come through second cousins. That's what. No. That's what we talk about, right? So yeah. uh, we did a fantastic job with the show. Um, very interesting comments, and uh, we like to move off the subject a little bit throughout our two-hour segment. Uh, so there was some other interesting dialogue in there that I think would just really uh, open your mind. And uh, you know, I always like to say, uh, I have never in my time here on earth heard any dialogue like the dialogue that we bring here at this show. I mean, this is stuff that's really happening underneath the surface of everybody's lives, but nobody seems to be able to talk about it or develop you or, you know, have an inspiring uh, an inspiring conversation. So I just love, love what we do, man. Uh, check us out on bartalkwithj.com. We're on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, we black Planet. Planet. <laughs> we no, we black Planet. Planet. But, but I want to do a shout out to um, POF. All our POF people that's on POF. Okay. Again, you know, that's a dating site. But one of the things is Bar Talk with Jay is on that dating site. The group. Man, I heard they got 70,000 people. I want the 70,000 because, again, yeah. in the dating game, we are talking about the different relationship that goes on. And we want to give it a little bit more clear. Um, because, again, I like to say old school to new school. The language has changed a little bit. And, again, how everything is laid out, so convenient. We want to make sure respect still stays in the game. Yeah. So again, for all you that's listening to POF, hey, don't ever be embarrassed about it. This is Bar Talk with Jake. We are bringing real talk. So y'all have real issues out there, we want to bring them to the table and get them addressed. Absolutely. Maybe we can get somebody to change. We don't know, but the bottom line, we're going to talk about it. Well, we believe somebody's going to change. I mean, when you hear these ideas, you can't help but um, become stronger in your decision making, uh, have a better vision for how your relationship should, should go, how you could better manage yourself to uh, be more successful in your life. Uh, we talk about core ideas here, and uh, again, that's just what I love about this show. So continue to be with us. Um, go back and listen to us. We got 50, 60, 70 shows 
uh, that are out there online, and uh, you can always email us at bartalkwithjay.com. Uh, go there, go to our website, and uh, send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, shall we cover quote for the day? I mean, go ahead, man. Okay, uh, Barbara put this together, and uh, obviously she's making Georgia Barbara yeah, yeah, still, well, in the, still in the building. Yeah, she's not here. Yeah, still in the building, always in the building. Uh, she does such a wonderful job for us. She put this quote together, and uh, it's um, it's you know five or six sentences. So bear with me. Life is all about evolution. What looks like a mistake to others has been a milestone in our lives. Even if people have betrayed us. Even if our hearts were broken, even if people misunderstood or misjudged us, we have learned from these incidents. We are human and we make mistakes, but learning from them is what makes the difference. Mm -hmm. Learning from the mistakes is what makes the difference. We live a life that is all about evolution. And you, you, you must understand, folks, and I may be preaching to the choir here, but uh, even those who are at the top can learn from this. Um, most of life is going to be about overcoming failures. It's not going to be about the things that you do to just be successful. It's going to be about how you bounced back from that no. It's going to be about how you overcame that problem. It's going to be about how you dealt with and lived with that lot that was set against you. Uh, you know, whatever that happens to be, you, you, you just find yourself uh, not making a lot of money. You know, for long periods of time, that could be your lot in life. But um, we have to know that life is going to always present us with opportunities. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity is to be more successful. But to be more successful, you have to overcome the hurdles and the failures and the challenges. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that every one of them means something for you. It means that, hey, I have conquered that thing. I know what to do. I know I can do it. And, uh, and self-introspection, you know, philosophy is really the nature of our lives. You know, we all live in these miniature universes of philosophies, and this philosophy just basically suggests that folks take your um, your problems and your challenges and just look at them from a perspective that I'm here to learn something from them. They're not here to beat me up. You know, again, um, it goes back to, I said it in many shows in the past, we carry a lot of our pain. We carry a lot of them, absolutely. When you carry them, you don't always learn from them. So you, you're carrying a burden, and then you put it on the next person. Right. And a lot of that really is to be learned from, not to just be passed on. Because he did me like this, you going to do me like this. So right. You're passing on. However somebody else did you, you do not have to look the next person in the same way, at least he's doing the same action. Right. And I will say, sometimes you gravitate to the same kind of people. So you have to change your mindset in order to change your altitude and the people that comes around. There you go. So, and that takes work. And that's why we're asking you to come to the show and understand. It's a breakdown mentally of a change in the brain because your actions reflect back to your brain. You have to think totally different. And that's where Crab broke it down, pen and paper. You gotta start writing down some things so you can see the changes in your life or you're gonna go back and do the old things. Yeah. We need you to do the new. The new ain't with what we used to do. Yeah. It's about doing things in a more unified way. That your brain will understand when it sees it. Because it's going all over. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah, and, and, and it's interesting that you bring it up. Yeah, because our brains are going all over the place. <laughs> right? Uh, my all God. over the place. And uh, there's so many um, resources for information that are pulling us in so many different directions. Not, not only our news broadcasts and social media, but you know, the gossip at work and, you know, what's happening in your neighborhoods and, you know, it's just a lot that's pulling us. And th this next segment here, and I'll get to it quickly, uh, this next segment is just, just a moment to, to identify and utilize what works, right? So if your mind's bouncing all over the place, mm -hmm. then you got to figure out what works and stick to that. Your formula, right? Oh man, I like that. We need to coin that. You gotta find your formula. Now here's the segment that Barbara put together. She asked, and this is a very deep subject. I'm not sure that I can tackle it like it needs to be. It says, explain why we should never let go of loyalty and faithfulness, but to tie them around our necks and write them on our hearts. Mm. Why we should never let go of loyalty and faithfulness. 
Boy, that's a uh, you know that's for the deepest path. That's a yeah, that's, a that's real. That's deep the, that goes that, that goes back to your spiritual core. Yeah, it does. And you know, my dialogue here, just a couple of sentences on it. Uh, it's coming back to what I originally said. We have we have we can never let go of loyalty and faithfulness because we can never let go of what we know works. Mm. Your formula. Your formula. You can never let go of your formula. Now you might learn some things to improve your formula, but if you start using somebody else's formula, then it's not going to work for you because you don't have their history, their resources, their mindset, whatever the case may be. Um, we have to. So so um, we have to let the trait of loyalty be our foundation. Okay, like how we pick friends. Now you got a set process. You know what kind of people work in your life. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know that you need some strong people who talk a lot of noise, or you need some quiet people, or you know whatever that is. But uh, how you choose your friends, you have to lean on that methodology. It's not to say that some people can't come through the gate right. and become friends with you, um, but uh, even though they may be outside of the normal traits of people that you might have as friendship, but if uh, if you recognize that they are. You know, a little schemy, a little live, a little... control over is our thinking and the only thing that we can depend on is the Lord and so we always have to let our thinking lean on the Lord and be loyal to that knowledge be loyal to that faith um, and it will always produce fruit sometimes we you know when I read books I get off on tangents of thoughts mm -hmm. and I want I see my life kind of start fluttering I come back to the Lord next thing you know everything is settled out I come back to his word, next thing you know, the problem is fixed, I'm on to the next thing. So uh, I know that his word works, and I stay loyal and faithful to that. I like to say when I heard loyal and faithful, and we was talking about, again, a formula, it made me go back to chemistry. It sounded like to me, the loyalty, the faithfulness, that's your base. Right. You gotta have a base when you come to most things. And uh, that's, your, that's your base. And that's what we want you to base this on. Go to your base. Your basic, where no matter what you might want to add, you got to start with something. Yeah, you got to start with this something. Yeah. To your core. And that's why we said this is your base. It's just that y'all love chemistry. Uh, I did all right with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, let's get ready for our first break. And uh, oh. I'm going to go ahead and tackle, uh, yeah. at least introduce the subject <clears throat> for today. <the> <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to see how you handle this one. Bro. Man, I'm, this is an interesting one. Here uh -huh. we go, folks. So, you're in a committed relationship but not in love with him or her anymore, mm -hmm. but perhaps in love with someone else. What Three. should you do? What? <laughs> <laughs> Three years uh, left, and now you want some? Oh, oh man, Lord. man. Okay. Now, before we go in, because I know y'all want to know what we think about this. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to stay tuned. Yeah. Because this is going to be very interesting. We're going to try to dissect this, because this actually came to me from a person that was in this situation. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, I'm not going to tell you about their outcome because bottom line, it's not just about what they go through, it's about what all of us go through. And can we just dissect it where you can have a better understanding of what should happen mm -hmm. if it was you, you know, because it might not apply to you. And if it don't, then don't walk in this. And if you do, <laughs> you're going to learn something tonight. Anyway, we're not doing that grandmama, that grandmama crap. What? Energy, that homemade. Oh, you know? yeah, that's Remember that the big. block of cheese that, that used to be sliced out with the oh, red. That's that, oh, that's that government. Yeah, with the red peel on the end of it. Oh, oh man, you, you peel it back. Off. We start to give our age. We start to see us I have, I done claimed it. It is what it is, bro. You know? I'm I like, claimed it, but yeah, I you know, the white hair doesn't tell it all. So, you know. <laughs> oh, but, Ain't nothing but wisdom. That's what I'm going to give it to. But for anybody that know him but not him, to think of something that might be you but it ain't you, yes, we got him on the phone. Jamal, how you doing? Man, what it do, Jay? What it do, crap? What's happening? What's good? What's good, man? What's good? I want y'all to like. 
Hey man, it's all on you. Let me let me break you down with Kraft guy for you. Kraft, give him, give it to him. Okay, man. Let Here's the topic for tonight. Very interested in your comments. So you're in a committed relationship, but not in love with her, him or her anymore. Uh, perhaps you may be in love with someone else. What should you do? Mm -mm -mm. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Uh, listen, I know this goes against everything that y'all think I might have said. Okay. How well? Tell the truth. At the end of the day, somebody's getting hurt. Mm. The hard part about it is your truth is going to be the thing that either hurts the person you were loving or you're going to hurt the person you are in love with one or the other mm. but if you don't tell the truth you are going to do nothing else but hurt yourself mm. period mm. because the worst thing is to keep a marriage or a relationship that is not just built on a lie that is living a lie Right. Where you think, hey, this person is the best thing for you. And truth be told, it's been Tony the whole time that she's been in love with, and you've just been second fiddle. Right. Now, I don't know about some of y'all cornballs out there, but I'm not one. Right. I am an ego based, full on man, <laughs> ain't no changing it. Right. So when I go down that road with a female, I'm not going to say I did it. I'm going to be the best that ever done it. The one that she gonna remember, the one that put the smile on her face, the one that make her pull out her own hair. Right. Yes, I'm that too. Right. So if you don't tighten up your game, not me, somebody that look like me, talk like me, <laughs> smooth like me, yeah. don't pick up the pieces. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it don't make nobody none it ain't the man's fault, it ain't the husband's fault. It's the female or it is the wife or whoever. It's that person in the middle. It's their fault and they continue to lie. They mm -hmm. lie to themselves. Yeah. And so and so how, how do you how do you break that down to the person? You just sit them down and say, Listen, you know, give me your word for how, you know, that conversation you have with, with that person who you're Oh man, you're telling listen. Them. Everybody can't paint like I could paint. So a cornball is gonna try this and he gonna get his feelings hurt. But okay. if I was to give you an illustration, yes. it will be that first week. This is not a conversation you just sell up overnight. You gotta plan this conversation out. So you been at this point you've been two months in. Anything over two months and you're in a in an affair. Point blank period, it's an affair. Mm -hmm. At least in the first couple of weeks you could have just said it was a fling. Now you are a full on physical, emotional affair. Every time you and the other person have sex, guess what? It's better than the time between you and your original. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. Okay? Because at that point, you're more than comfortable in each other's skins, in each other's beds, and in each other's everywhere else that y'all getting into. Right. That's an affair. Right. Right. Now, the guy, side piece number two, could be doing everything he can, because guess what? He just happened to fall for a female that was in a situation that she not happy in no more. Okay. Why would he ever turn down something that makes him happy to please the next dude? Men ain't that nice. Right. Period. Right. So you can lose that idea. And why would the husband even think to do something different if he don't know he's doing something wrong? Okay. Well, you keep accepting his wrong behavior, and now he's like, hey, this is what it is. You knew what it was when you signed on. Mm. See, these are things you walked into. You chose to walk into a marriage where you weren't fully satisfied. If you are not fully content with what you have, then see, anything can pull you away. Yeah, but see, they, they, didn't fall in, they, they didn't fall in love with something they weren't happy with. They was happy with it, and then they fell out of love. For whatever reason. You know, there's a hundred, there's a hundred love, reasons, love, right? Love is, love is an emotion, but love is not an emotion. Okay, <laughs> okay. like this. Grown folks, we'll look at kids and we'll be like, man, that's puppy love. You don't know what real love is. Real love is waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning just to surprise her because you had a bad dream that she was with somebody else. Love is taking out the last bit of your check to help her pay her rent because you knew she needed it because she lost her job and now you got to figure out what you got to do on OT. That's love mm -hmm. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 
love is a choice. Love is an action. Yeah. Love is something that you do on a daily basis. I can love you but not be in love with you. Right, right. But either way, the love changes. And that's what this whole conversation is about, is that I'm no longer in love with that person. Maybe I started a fling, fell in love, and now I'm having an affair, you know, based on how you measure the whole process. Um, uh, and, and that conversation does need to happen. Um, and I'm going to talk about this all show long, but it's not happening. It's not happening. People, it, it, like, people are cheating. Okay, why, why is why is it no, not happening? People are cheating because it, it's harder to get out of it. It's like um, yeah. getting the drowning man out the water. <laughs> right. Because you gotta think, man, our last names are tied together. The house is in each other's names. Yeah. It's both names are on the insurance right now. Yeah. Man, if you go leave me, you better not put the new wife on the insurance or I'm gonna kill both of y'all. Man, you better who getting the kids on the holidays. It's not easy to walk away once you're already committed. Right. It's not easy because now you got to figure out, man, I'm a, I love you, I want to be with you, but what am I going to do when everybody's looking up at the family reunion and now i got to bring a whole new dude? How do I face people? I love you, but how do I face all that and go through that? And it's not so simple. It gets real complicated, yes, real messy. It does. You just have to say, and that's probably, is this person that it, worth it? Yeah, that's probably a key. Forget that, am I worth it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably a key point in this whole dialogue is that that is not an easy conversation to have. No, it's not. That is not easy to, you know, just because you're not in love with their heart don't mean you aren't in love with their person and their family and what they bring to the table. You don't appreciate them. I, you know? I have seen a lot of great marriages, not because the people was in love with each other, they just accepted the roles. Hey, you are an awesome mother. You're an awesome provider and father. Guess mm -hmm. what? We got some awesome kids. Mm -hmm. And them kids who grew up knowing two awesome parents. Yes. But as far as a couple, it was something totally different. Because yeah. when them kids left the house, now nah, they didn't know what to do with each other because the roles then shifted. We weren't dating each other anymore. Everything we did was with the kids. So yeah. how do we... See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's major. So you, and so you, you can fall out of love, you know, and, uh, and you know, what, things what get mundane. When you find that person, yo, I'm in a relationship. I, I, I really care about you. I, I, you know, I love you. All that wonderful stuff. But then, yo, it's a couple weeks go by, months go by, and dang, Brittany, she, Brittany, the homie, man, Brittany, me and Brittany will go have lunch, man. Mm -hmm. me, me, me and Brittany have a hell of a conversation. We, yeah, we're going to go check the game together. Mm -hmm. Wait, me, 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 me and Brittany up in the house at 11 o'clock at night. Ain't nobody... Brittany, you know you look kind of good, right? Right. And now you and Brittany have started something, and now you got to accept, I'm in love with the wrong woman. Man, and, and, what do I do now? And are do you I really? hurt the girl I cared about? Yeah. And it's not that she did something wrong, but I'm just not completely satisfied with what girl A offered me. Girl B came by and it's not just I'm jumping at the will of the next girl, but man, she needs something so much more that I can't even pass this opportunity that. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And at that point, you gotta make a, you, you know, you, you gotta make a decision within yourself uh, even before you decide to do something, you know? Um, that, that way you can keep yourself in check. Well, hello. That's How right. are you? We, How are you? We, we got AP oh, in the building there tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we, 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 we got we, yeah, hey. we got my, my hey, number hey, one hey, stunner. Hello. How are you? Doing good, girl. Hey, listen. Um, we are in the midst of a dialogue of, okay. about um, being in love, or you know, here we go. You're in a committed relationship, but mm -hmm. not in love with him or her mm -hmm. anymore. Mm. Perhaps in love with someone else. Mm. What, what should you do? Okay, and where are we in the discussion? Well, you know, uh, your boy Jamal was giving his comments. Okay. And, and he um, broke it down some kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, I, I, I believe... Then he got to be truthful. Yeah. And hey, you're you going to hurt somebody. Yes. So you hey, hey. Yes, sir. Me and you were in a relationship, right? Okay. You know, we've been rocking strong. I can trust you to hold down the bill if I need to. We, we good. Mm hmm But at the end of the day, you know what I mean? At the end of the night, we touch. But it's just not, we just don't touch, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like we kiss, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more like it feels like the 4th of July is more like September 1st. It just, 
And, you know what I'm saying? We ain't even back to school yet. It's just you doing it. You, mm-hmm. you understand? Okay. If, now, I'm a cheat on you. I ain't even gonna lie. At that point, <laughs> I've already smashed somebody else. I'm, and if any dude wants to lie and tell themselves or tell their wives, no, baby, I've never cheated. He's lying. Okay. Flat out, he's lying. Okay, if so we ever get mundane, mm-hmm. your strip club bill has went up, well, he is tricking off on somebody else, watch a foot locker bill pop up on the card. Okay, finish the sentence, finish the question but, to AP. So, yeah. if I'm going to be with you, and I rock off, I rock off, cool. But if I'm willing to leave you, or have a full-on affair, I can't keep lying to you about the affair. At some point, I gotta say, dude, this is, maybe I thought this was a one-time thing that we could have knocked out the way, maybe you could have joined, but... I'm just not in there with you no more. Mm-hmm. We make great friends. We make great parents. Mm-hmm. We make great business partners. Mm-hmm. But emotionally, you. it's a conversation that has to have that that has to be had I mean it's a very difficult conversation but it happens um I've had conversations with my girlfriends or associates where you know he's a good dude he pays all the bills he's very responsible he's a great father but he just don't do it for me anymore um and now those types of situations it is very beneficial um to have a very grown conversation um, and I think that having that conversation is, a, it can be a very painful conversation, but it can also be a breakthrough. Um, because if you've got two people that, if they've got kids, they've co-mingled funds, maybe they're in business together um, on some entrepreneurial kind of things, um, and they genuinely get along. They're very good partners when it comes to the business, when it comes to co-parenting, when it comes to maintaining a household, but they just don't do it for one another physically anymore, then that is a real conversation that you can have. Um, and whether the other person is open to a situation where it's like, you know what, we can do all this, we can do 90% of our stuff together, but this 10%, this whole sex thing, Let's just be open and you do your thing and I'll do mine. And hey, if sometimes it's a Friday night, we don't put the bed kids down early and we want to co-mingle together, then let's do that. That's a real conversation to have. If now, if that other person is not open to that, then you still need to have that conversation so that you can have a coming to Jesus. And it's like, okay, so what are we going to do then? Yeah. And hey, uh, see, I, I, I'm, I'm, of the, I'm of the mindset where I feel like, yeah, we can have that conversation. The sex thing, that 10%, that's a big 10%. Anybody tell you it's not there, cotton picking lie. But I feel like on that emotional tip, if I'm dying in this relationship, then tell me, hey, I'm dying. Hey, I'm dead. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm whatever. Mm-hmm. Don't let me keep looking like Boo Boo the Fool where for the cornball or for the guy who gets their feelings hurt, I'm sorry. I don't want to be that guy who's really buying flowers and really going, I'm trying, babe. Don't you see the effort? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. your heart is somewhere else. I mean, if I really loved you, really loves you, mm-hmm. I want you to be happy no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. It's going to hurt. Listen, I'm not going to lie about that. I'm going to cut you out. Listen, I'm going to rip up some of your things. Listen, yeah. we have to we have to go to break. Yeah. Bear, bear with us for a moment, Jamal. I think you uh you are hitting the nail on the head in so many points that I think need to be shared. Um, I don't necessarily identify with them, but uh, for the sake of our audience, they, they all need to be heard. <laughs> they all need to be heard, and they're all relevant. Woo wee! So train, yeah. <laughs> oh, dang! You know I love to stir it up over here as we do a bar talk with Jay. But I got somebody on the line right now, and we we gotta ask them. How was your day, Jeffrey? 
Brother Jay, what is going on with you, sir? Woo! Yeah, it sounds like you had a good day. Oh, well, we can, yeah. we can, uh, I'm doing good. I can hear the energy in his voice. Yeah. I can hear the energy in your voice. What's going on, Brother Jeffrey? How you doing, man? Brother Kraft, everything is everything. You know, I had a, uh, a light day to day at work. You know, I had to uh, go to the dentist. Everybody, make sure you go to your dentist. It's important. Yes. You know, fix your teeth. Yes. Uh, you know, Brother it, it was cool. It was cool. My dentist was real cool. She was a very nice lady. She was married. She, you know, she got into a different mind frame today. But in spite of all that, you know what time it is. Yes, sir. It is time for you to close your mouth and listen. You ask me some questions. I give you some answers from a man's point of view. Now listen, I got one reason for the habitually single woman and one reason for the habitually single man as to why you might be single, but before we get to that, here is my disclaimer. Now, one going to talk about that doesn't apply to you. If it does apply to you, I want you to put your foot up in this shoe. But if it does apply to you, I want you to put both feet in both shoes and walk around in them because you're going to learn something tonight. Now, ladies, you go first. Maybe some of y'all are single simply because you don't even know what a man is. Ooh. I need you to understand this. Oh. I need you to really feel me on this. You've been dating pimps, players, and hoes for so long, you don't know what a man is. Mm -hmm. A good man can come to you and treat you right, and you get in your mind that, oh, man, this guy's too nice. I need the friend zone him. He didn't even talk to me when I, you know, disrespected him. <laughs> come on, lady. You've been around the wrong man so long that you identify with that type of treatment, and you relate that treatment to love. Mm -hmm. That is a miscalculation. You have put yourself in a position to be hurt by love in your own mind instead of loved and caressed by love, instead of being showered with adoration and affection by love, simply because you don't know what a real man is. You can't recognize it. Mm -hmm. The only thing you recognize is a pimp player or a hoe. Mm. And you keep recognizing that type of man. That man's gonna keep running over you and running through you, and he's gonna run away from you, leaving your ass. Sing. Ouch! Mm. Ouchy, ouchy, woo woo, man. Uh, that is quite common. That is quite common. Uh, we see it as you know, men. From our perspective, we see it all the time. We see women who, I don't know, don't seem to identify with the the, the manliness that's being expressed to them. Um, you know, things that my mama taught me, some women just can't get down with. You know, I even remember later on in my marriage of 10 years, you know, toward the latter end, my wife would, was always saying, you are, you are always dressed up. Why you don't dress down? Dress, wear some shorts, uh, hang out. I'm like, no, 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 that's not how I roll, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, my pops grew up wearing slacks and shirts to the park, mm -hmm. you know, and always got his very best on, shining his shoes. That's how I roll. I'm not a tennis shoe cat. I can be, you know, I can be Kango and all that other stuff, but um, you will always catch me, gentlemen, nice slack and pants, and she didn't, she didn't like that. Like something about her started to, um, uh, I don't know, be not happy with that. Like, like it was, uh, I was off on another level or I was trying to be something that certainly that she didn't want me to be, but uh, that wasn't the case. So, uh, yeah, we see a lot of women who just can't really identify with what a man looks like. And you also got to look at her exposure. You know, that's, that's all she's ever been exposed to. Mm -hmm. That's everything. That's what's going to keep gravitating to her, and right. that's the kind of boy she always going to have. Mm -hmm. right? So when she run across that good man, it's new to her. Yeah. So, of course, she's going to treat it by what's been shown. So, again, um, a person got to recognize what they're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. And that right there is just, just one of the facts. Um, not saying she can't conform, right? But up front, you got to understand what you're dealing with. Yeah, and I and I know we finna get our ass chewed out by Bob oh, Jeffrey, yeah. but uh, I'm gonna take this one right here to the men's side because I do believe there are a lot of men who don't know what a real woman looks like. And uh, maybe they've never been exposed what, to a real woman, what part right? The woman, don't they? I mean, you know, a real woman, man, just has a class act about her whole spirit. You know what I'm saying? You can see it. You can see it. Did she come skin. in the room and let you know she's the coach? Yeah, she usually yeah, leave her shoulders out and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, wow. Yeah. Hey, you start. Hey, anybody, yeah, anybody, anybody <laughs> caught under this? Okay, back to you, Jeff. Back to you, Jeff. <laughs> Yeah, listen, there are a lot of men who don't know what women look like. And I, Jeffrey, I think the, the point is so in, in important.
because we got to find a way to expose people to a real man and to a real woman. Mm -hmm. This dialogue is for not if we don't find a way to expose people to what that really should look like. Yes, true. It's back to you, brother. All right, now, fellas, don't think I'm making y'all off the hook. Fellas, you are next. Tell us some of you are single because you don't know what a man is either. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's your managed ways to find your manhood. You think that you're running your cars, your clothes, and everything like that. You think that makes up for your lack of character. You think being a boss, you think that makes you the best man that you could possibly be. And I need to tell you that you have to be a builder. Mm. I'm going to get a little biblical on you. Adam had a few jobs before Eve came along. Adam was responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep of the garden. Now, he didn't have to, you know, kill the ground because the fruit was, you know, abundant. All the animals were already there, but Adam was charged with naming the animals. Yes. Everything he named the animals, even the heavens acknowledged that was what they were called. Mm. Because Adam represented the best of the world and the heavens. He was taken and drawn from both. Adam was actually God on earth. I need y'all to feel me. Go ahead. So Adam was a builder. He wasn't a boss. He was a builder. And everybody respects a builder. Yes. And when your woman comes along, guess what your woman's going to do? She's going to multiply that which you are building. I ain't even going to say that he took the bike from that two building that part to the side. Right. And what I want you to understand, Adam was also responsible for everything that Eve did. Mm. Not just Eve hanging around, but everything that Eve did. He built. He provided. So I need you to understand, that, I mean, you got to be a builder. If you really will be about business, you got to be a builder. And watch a woman do something that you don't even know how to handle. Watch her submit without you asking it. Because you've shown her something worth submitting to. You've yes. given her something worth partnering with and walking along with. Yes. I need you to understand, men and women are not equal. We are not equal. Women, you cannot write your name in the snow. I need you to know where I'm going with that. You can do that, baby. You can do that. We can do that, though. We can write our names in the snow. I think you know how we can do it, too, ladies. Don't get it twisted. We are meant to balance each other. We are meant to balance each other. Right. Balance. And, fellas, if you're not a builder, you're, you're a boss, but not a builder, well, guess what? That woman going to be a bossy-ass single because you ain't built nothing for her to walk along, to partner with, to, 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 to add to because you're too busy being a damn boss. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, I especially love the distinction between boss and builder, right? Because a boss may not necessarily leave anything good behind, mm -hmm. right? A mm -hmm. boss may not have a platform to support a wife and kids and family and, you know, the opportunity to be a, a real man in this world. Um, but a builder will always have something to leave behind. And, and, uh, and they always need it. We always build it. Yeah, what, what, you know, man, but what a powerful, boss what a powerful is what a lot of young people want to be. Right. So they want the power. They don't understand the growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a builder, kind of, to me, is a more neutral person. There's understanding that I can have power and stay humble and still give growth. Yeah. Because you got to be able to pass some things on and be able to help. And again, I can understand how that can open up a woman to want to be more with you than just a boss or a person that can control a lot of people, but ain't leaving nothing. Right. And leading everybody astray because again, he has that kind of power. And we watch it on TV a lot. But to get away from the TV, just what do we do? We, we want to be higher and we want to be stronger, but we always don't want to do the things that take properly. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why you ain't there. Yeah. Yes, kind of. Yeah, you know, even the concept of boss is still fallacy until you produce something, <laughs> right? Uh, it, you know, even being a boss ain't just about having authority, it's about getting something done. But, um, point well taken, and uh, I received the conviction for Brother Jeffrey, for uh, for all of mankind, uh, If and, and Brother Jeffrey, once again, because they don't know what a man is either, we have to show it to them. 
And I don't know how we do it. And I'm kind of asking the Lord in the midst of this conversation about how can we do that. Because I think men are ready to hear about what a real man looks like. And I think women are ready to hear about what a real woman looks like. And, uh, and have some, some greater examples and role models perhaps mm -hmm. to, uh, to build the future generations. On Zoom, Jeffrey. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I definitely think those examples are needed because when you look at um, the prevalence of how many men were raised by single women, um, and then you expect that man who grew up in a single parent household where his father was not there and there were no male role models to now lead a household like that. Like, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Yeah. And so I was blessed enough where my parents are married, still married to this day. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. in dating, you you I notice a stark difference. If I'm dating a dude whose parents were together, have been together versus a dude that was raised in a single parent household if he was raised by his mother there are just some things that you just you can see them you can just see the difference yeah there are just certain things that that go on that can go unsaid with someone who grew up with that similar experience than right. you versus somebody who you like no that's not how that's supposed to work yeah 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 Sound and, uh, <laughs> I, love, I love it right yeah right um, you know, I, listen that's that's excellent dialogue again i've never heard it in any form of media uh, we need to have more of these dialogues, yeah. and uh, we appreciate Jeffrey for bringing that to the table. What uh, I'll let you keep moving, Jeffrey. What you got for us, man? Man, this is real easy. I need everybody to understand that when you want something bad enough, you stay right away to go get it. So if you're a man and you didn't grow up with your father, that doesn't mean you don't have uh, you don't have what it takes already inside of you to be a man. You just figure out a way to go uh, find it and get your manhood. If you're a woman and you grew up in a household that happened to be a little more abusive than it should have been uh, healthy, that's okay. You can share that pain. You can share all that stuff if you want to and go get your joy and your happiness. I need men and women to understand that everything, is, everything else is an excuse. Everything else is an excuse. Yeah, we don't have enough men out there in the streets right now. We don't have enough brothers out there, you know, setting that fine example. So what? If we focus on that, we're going to keep on getting that. But when you really want something, I want you to think about that time in your life you really had to make something happen. Mm -hmm. How you made that thing happen. It's the same situation right now. we got too many men right now playing around, saying this, you know, my father wasn't there when I was 10. Mm -hmm. You're 45 now. Right. You've been 35 years. Right. You haven't addressed that pain. Right. Right. I need you to drop that and step up. So we got, we got women right now who are still punishing their mother for some, comp uh, some confidence-breaking conversations they had with their mother when they were 12 and 15 years old. Right. Lady, you're 35 now. Mm -hmm. I need you to work on letting that pain go and forgiving your mother. Yes. So I'm going to say this and we'll leave it right there. No more excuses. If we want to be about the business of rebuilding our men and our women, we got to go out and figure out a way to do it. The first thing to do is to look towards each other and not at each other. Mm -hmm. And start talking to each other. And when we start talking, men and women, when we start talking, we start to recognize that yes, we're not equal, but we damn sure meant for each other. And when we're meant for each other, we start walking together and talking together. We start putting our households together. Our children grow up healthier. And when our children grow up healthier, healthier they become the next generation of children. And that's all I got. Mm, that's all. That's everything, man. That's everything. And um, what comes to my mind, uh, thank you so much, Jeffrey. What comes to my mind, kind of a, like a, a next step thought process, is this same attitude about our lives. No more excuses. Mm -hmm. No more excuses why we don't have money to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. No more excuses why we are not fully educated. No more excuses why we aren't the boss in our in our offices. No more excuses why we can't start the business. No more excuses why we can't raise our children to be good children and good productive uh, people in, in uh, society. There's no more excuses, man. We don't need to hear. We, we know the truth. The truth is always with us. It's always in us. And we know, we know that we're capable of more, but a lot of us are lounging. Mm -hmm. 
lounging on our laurels, stuff, stuff that we used to think about 10, 15 years ago, we still never put it in place. Mm -hmm. We still never took action on those ideas, those opportunities, those skill sets that we have. And I think that No More Excuses represents 2018 and right now. And I, and I believe that we should share that uh, that level of commitment and responsibility with the people around them. Mm -hmm. When they start giving you excuses, you don't want to hear it. Hey, I don't want to hear it. You didn't get your behind up yesterday morning to get done what needed to be done. And, and I think that's what's going to help all of us who have greater potential to continue to elevate because sometimes we're holding on to all of these people and their excuses mm -hmm. and we're giving empathy and, and trying to understand. Mm -hmm. You can't understand laziness. Mm -hmm. You can't understand the aptitude of, of not being able to overcome fears and doubts. Mm -hmm. You know, you can empathize with it, but you know, no more excuses, man. I like that, Jeffrey, and I uh, really, really appreciate you bringing that point to the table. Any comments from my team members? I mean, yeah, the way you just slap somebody in the face. <laughs> all of us, man, including <laughs> myself. I'm like, man. <laughs> All of us. Who you mad at today? <laughs> oh, man, it's about no, being proud. Yeah, that's real. You know, intensity I mean, you, you, is what you, life requires. You're man. totally home because again, we got a responsibility, and a lot of people are sleeping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I hope somebody did take a slap at me because I heard it, and luckily it wasn't me. Yeah. Ain't no last calls here. Bar talk with Jay.